Welcome to the station crew. Enjoy your stay. Welcome all new crew members to Space Station 14. Space Station 14 in its most basic essence is a multiplayer role-playing game that takes place on a space station. However, the purpose of this video is to teach you the controls and act as a survival guide to help you roleplay. So, let's jump right into it. First thing in this room, I handcrafted this map to be a linear tutorial experience to hopefully try to help the information digest as easily as possible and be explained in the most contained area as possible. So the first thing here written is eat interact. Well, I press E on this coffee cup, cup and press E in this hat, nothing happens. Well, if I press E on the closet, it seems that E interacts with doors and objects like that. E can also interact and open doors and close them. Well, you're probably wondering how to pick up objects. Obviously, you could probably figure out that WASD is movement. That's nothing too special. But left click is how you pick up things. So I could pick up this coffee. And Q lets you put it back down. I could pick up this hat. But how do you put it on? Well, there's some slots down here. And I could put it there. But oh wait, that's not on my head. Well, that's a pocket slot. I lets you open up your inventory. And I more so like to call it your equipment slots, not your inventory. But anyways, I could now look at all these slots. And you see how it's red? Doesn't fit, doesn't fit. Oh, well, there's a hat slot. And now I am wearing the hat. If we move on over to this room, you can see Z is to use the hand item. What that means is, is almost every object in the game has some interaction with the Z button. So if I take my hat off by clicking on it, I can press Z, and look, puts it right on. Well, how do you eat? Well, pressing E on it does nothing, just like pressing E in this chair does nothing. Well, I could pick it up, and Z is an eat button. For food, at least. And I could put it back down. There's other, so other ways to eat. There's Alt-click. Which is an alternative interact with objects. And for food, it's eat again. And another way, you can right-click, which gives you a name of all the items that are near your cursor. But what isn't clear is that you can right-click on an item again, and it shows you all the things you can do with the item. So I can examine it, and it's a too incredible for Myrtle salad. It sounds delicious. But another thing you can do is you can either pick it up, pull it with you, point at it, which another keybind for pointing is shift middle mouse. So I could point at the sashimi, point at the chair, to point at myself, things like that. It's a very useful tool. So remember that right-clicking or right-clicking again is another way to figure out how you can interact with objects until you have a more clear indication of what the objects actually do. And from the previous room, and the, yeah, from the previous room, you have you always start with a backpack of some sort or whatever type you selected. You can press E on it to open up the UI, and now this is your inventory. And I like to keep my backpack over here because by default there's dead space over here, at least on a 1920 by 1080 resolution. And I just like to have my inventory ready to be clicked on any time. So just keep things moving. We come to the next room. And Shift-B to Quick Store. What that means is that Shift-B not only quick stores, but it also quickly takes an item out of your, your backpack. It takes the most recent item out of your backpack and puts it in your hand if you have no item in your hand. But if you have an item in your hand and you press Shift-B, it instantly puts it back. It's a very useful keybind and drastically speeds up how fast you interact with objects so you're not constantly just clicking here and then going back and putting it back, so on and so forth. And certain objects are containers like this. This is a toolbox. And inside, there's a crowbar, which crowbars are one of the most useful tools in the uh, game. I almost just ripped up a tile by accident. And you can press Shift-B to take it with you, which I highly recommend. And kind of take the flashlight. Flashlight's a unique object, and there's a few like this in the game, where if you have it in your hand you press Z, you turn it on. But it's also something you can put in your pocket slots, which you always have two of as long as you have a jumpsuit on. And it goes on your hotbar over here. So you can press number four, and it turns on your flashlight from your pocket. And make sure you don't leave it on all the time because it drains the battery. And over here, we see a cigar and a lighter. Well, these are slightly more advanced objects, so I could take the cigar and press Z, and it puts it in my mouth. 
but it isn't inherently smoking it, it's just unlit in my mouth. So certain objects interact with objects directly. So for this example, I could take the lighter, put it in my hand, and if you press Z, it flicks the lighter on. And then I could just left click the cigar in my mouth, and now I'm smoking. And Q again, Q once again drops things. And I can even come up to this soft drink machine, click on it, just say I want a space cola, take it with me. And nothing stops me from pressing Shift-B, putting in my backpack, and I have a drink for later. Shift-click, examine. Okay, so we learned about the right-click, and we learned that you can examine things through the right-click, but that's three clicks. To skip that, you can simply Shift-click to get descriptions of things. So, like, you can Shift-click on yourself, you can view people's IDs, you can view if they have any obvious injuries that you might otherwise not see on their actual, like, model. Or you can shift click on weapons such as a combat knife or any weapon and it tells you how much damage it does. Unfortunately it doesn't tell you how fast it swings so you kind of have to just learn this but for example the combat knife says it does 10 units of slash if I put it in my backpack but it also says the crowbar does 10 units of blunt. You would think they have identical damage but they don't. The combat knife swings significantly faster but that's not directly conveyed in the UI so you can learn a lot through examine but not everything. But Damage values are so not important right now. Shift click also lets you learn important information about the power state of doors. It appears to be unpowered. That means I can't open it normally. But this door actually does have power. So I can just press E to open it and close it like normal. Crowbars are very useful at prying open unpowered doors. Power is very often going to go out in the game and you're going to want to be able to still navigate the station. So, it's courtesy to close doors behind you with the crowbar, especially if you're going into, like, a room that would normally be locked, but... Anyways, the basics of that is, yes, crowbars open unpowered doors. And as stated before, Q drops things. So say, like, I want to put on this gas mask here. Well, I could pick it up, press Z, and I don't want the cigar anymore, so I could simply press Q. Put it back down. Very easy stuff. Now if I walk up further here, you can see the telltale signs that a room has been spaced. And as I can directly see, there are broken windows leading the space. If I were to open this door, I do not have proper protection to survive the cold reaches of space. I will instantly get frozen, start taking a ton of damage, I won't be able to breathe, and as you can imagine, death shortly follows. Well, in this scenario, there is a space tick guarding what appears to be a set of EVA armor, or clothes, soft suit, <laughs> one of those terms. Well, this door isn't powered, so walking into it isn't going to cause me any danger. So, we have to figure out how to exterminate this tick. Well, 1 equals harm mode on. Well, you can either click on harm mode, or otherwise known as combat mode, and that lets you start swinging. But normally, without harm mode on, left clicking won't hurt anything. You have to turn on hard mode to initiate combat. So now that I have this knife out, left clicking shows you the area you can attack in, and if you click too far away, you won't swing at all, letting you know it's out of range. So like, I could walk up to this chow main box, and swing at it, and it's let I just can't hit it because it can't be destroyed, but I can hit this chair for example, and I just destroyed the chair. And that's your basic left click. Right click pulls up this power bar with a white dot moving left and right. The closer you get to the middle, the more you do, do you do more damage. And if you left click directly on the green, you'll do double damage. And it wide swings. So, for example, there's two tables here. If I left click, I only hit one. But if I wide swing, I would have hit both. So, let's get this door open and let's dispatch this tick to move on. So... If I were to leave harm mode on, I can't pry the door because it's now treating the crowbar as a weapon. So to open the door, you have to be quick about this. You turn off harm, left click to pry the door open, and quickly turn on combat. And I prepared a power swing, and turn on my flashlight to see. I have safely dispatched a tick and one, and one easy blow. So now, let's take this EVA suit. What you could do is just left click it, and you can press X to swap hands down here, and it's highlighted by this golden box to let you know which hand's active. So I can now run with both 
pieces in my hands, or I could have put it on one at a time. But putting on EVA stuff slows you. So now all you have to do is press Z to put on the suit, and it goes into this outer suit slot, not taking up your jumpsuit slot, and Z to put on the helmet. And I can take the bowler cap with me, or bowler hat, and put it in my backpack. And, well, now we are able to go into this space room without taking any pressure damage. But oh, oh darn. The sign warned us about our O2. As you can see by our gasping, we are now suffocating. Well, don't panic. Every person starts with a survival box that will start with an emergency oxygen tank and a breath mask. I have a gas mask on from previous that previous room, and that acts as, acts as a breathing mask. So what you need to do is you need to take your emergency oxygen tank and put it into either your pocket slot or suit slot, but keep in mind you only have a suit slot if you have something in your outer clothing slot. So I would just recommend for now just put it in your pocket slot because your pockets can't be taken away as long as you have a jumpsuit. But I have it on, and now it seems like I'm still not breathing. So what you can do is, in order to breathe, is actually come over here and you got a new hotbar option, and it's called toggle internals. So you hear that breathing sound, and O2 meter will go away. Now I'm breathing normally, and all that damage I suffocated will restore as I breathe. The, the emergency tank doesn't last all that long, but it definitely lasts enough to survive, well, an emergency until you get actual help. Well, anyways, now that we're able to survive space, we probably shouldn't stay here anymore and we should move on. Fire doors will commonly go up when a room gets spaced, and they, like normal doors that are unpowered, can be crowbarred open. But you should always be courteous to people behind you, and make sure you crowbar the door closed. Because if you weren't to crowbar it, anything that's not next to another fire lock will get spaced, and you could potentially kill people who aren't as prepared as you. Let's move it in this next room. And we don't need our EVA clothes anymore. We are out of the danger. You can just... Leave them behind, return them where you're supposed to. But in this scenario, I'm just going to leave them on the ground because I don't need them anymore. And you could take your gas mask off, or there's an option on the side that lets you actually pull it down so you can see your beautiful face again. And there's also some nice glasses in here. Okay, so now that we're here and we're a little bit safer, let's take a drink. So you get the nice bottle, and the other bottles work this way can't just left click on yourself to drink it, you have to press Z to open it. Well, I can now take a drink directly, or I can even pour some in a cup. And yes, it does instantly transform into a whiskey glass. And now there's some uh, whiskey in this glass. And like other containers where there's things, stuff you can take out of them, there's also containers you can put stuff into, like your booze dispenser and your soda dispenser. So if you left click with the glass in your hand, it inserts it, and if you left click it again, it pulls up this UI. There's a few machines in the game like this, but this is the easiest one to explain. And you can now clear it, eject it. So now I just have an empty glass, move the window, put it back in. And let's just say I just want some cola. Well, I can dispense some out. And a lot of objects in the game have an alternative use and that lets you bypass multiple clicks. Like I could right click in, right click it again and eject the glass. Or in this case, I can just alt click it to use its alternative use and instantly pull the glass out. And since my mask is pulled up, I can drink. And if the mask wasn't pulled up, you can't drink, and the game will warn you promptly. There is another function with control clicking instead of alt clicking that lets you drag things. Dragging is a very useful tool. And in this scenario, I'm only dragging a plant. But this is control left click to drag. You can control left click it again to let it go. Or you can press H to let it go. Another keybind when you're dragging something is you can control right click to push it. And you can push it in a big radius around you and press H to let it go. Easy stuff. Well, there is still one more door leading onwards, so let's see what's in store for us. Huh, looks like a maintenance tunnel. A sign that says space pen. Well, what is a space pen? Let's find out. Press this button on the wall next to the gray tide. And, oh no. The room that you're in just explosively decompressed and you're now stuck to the cold reaches of space. Well, first things first. Open up your survival box, and don't panic, you got time, and look through it. There's an object that you always have in there called a space med pen. Take it out and press Z to self-inject. Your character will start screaming, like so, but don't panic. You're now safe from space for a short time. Also, remember to turn your oxygen back on. 
And as you see, this, this substance is very slippery because it was actually a welding tank that blew up. You can hold shift to not slip, and not slipping is pretty important to our survival. Let's just close that door behind us. Good thing we still have our curl bar. And we need to get out of that room and back into a room that has air. This room... Just uh, ignore this, the Medi pen screaming. That means it's working. This room is actually safe because the fire lock stopped the uh, space from reaching here and we are safe again. And yeah, this stuff is really annoying because you just slip all the time. But welding field bombs are nasty. But remember, holding shift lets you walk and you will not slip on surfaces like that. Well, we survived that ordeal. And we took a very minimal damage to show for it and medical can sort us out. Anyways, this uh, throwing objects isn't something you need to do all the time, but like sometimes it's nice to just be like, oh, I have somebody over here that wants something, or like throw on the side of a window. You could always just press Control Q to toss it. Another good thing that's kind of a cool thing to do is if you ever see a trash can, you could just Control Q to throw it away, and you can miss. There's a miss mechanic, but and the trash will take it on its own. Well. The door seems to be blocked, and I can't have any way of moving it. Well, let's go back to the basics. Why can't I move this? Well, let's shift-click it. Oh, new thing. It is anchored to the floor. Well, I can't move through it because it is a solid object and is anchored. Well, U-Tool machines have wrenches, or you can also find wrenches in other ways, but if you left-click on an object that is anchored with a wrench, it will unanchor it. But it is still solid. I still cannot walk through it. Well, you could just look, control click it and drag it away like so, no big deal. But another thing that control clicking lets you do, it lets you walk straight through an object. So like you could just leave it there and walk through the door. It's very useful information to know for an actual round. Well, interestingly enough, there is a skull and bones under the girder. And there's only one door to go through. I can't go back the way I came. In Space Station 14, you truly never know what's going to be another side of a door. But... There's only one way to find out, and that's by going through the door. Death is something that we will all experience in Space Station. Doesn't matter how good of a player you are, doesn't matter how experienced you are, doesn't matter if you know everything, doesn't matter if you even played as good as you could and did everything right. There will be a time period where you will die. And there will be a time period you'll die for the entire round. This is just a part of what makes Space Station such a, a great game. There's just so much uncertainty in every single round. And that's what keeps us playing. I hope the survival guide lets you stay alive just a little bit longer. Let you experience just a little bit more of the game. And yeah, that, that's really it. That is the basic controls. Uh, if you got any questions, I'm glad to answer them. I put a lot of work into this and I'm not asking for anything. I'm purely just trying to assist as many people as I can. And I really want to welcome more of you to the station.